Now, there's not a lot in trading that's like life. And I've done complete presentations just on the fact that trading is not like life. And the things in life that make you successful are often will make you the worst in trading, trading okay? Um, doctors and lawyers and automatic transmission mechanics tend to make the worst traders. And I just say all three of those because that's my way of accomplishing. Basically, everyone makes the worst traders. But if I had to kind of list them, doctors would be pretty high up there. Engineers often can be the worst because they're too smart and they also try to apply logic to everything. And logic doesn't often apply when it comes to trade. But trading like life is just making decisions and living with them. And I often make a joke at my wife's expense. I'll spare it tonight. <laughs> if you see me in person speak, if, if this uh, stupid virus ever goes away, then you'll probably see the joke. Anyway, it's easy to make decisions. It's hard to live with decisions. And usually when I talk about this, making decisions and living with them, I kind of set it up with the fact that you cannot remove your emotions from trading. And that's Descartes and Scholl have done the groundwork there, some of the groundwork there. And I learned from Scholl, Denise Scholl, that you can't make any emotions in making, you can't reduce, you can't eliminate your emotions in trade, okay? You can be less emotional, but every decision comes with an emotion, okay? Uh, I'll give you an example. It's kind of like, you know, right before I'm coming in here, my wife knows I'm, I need to eat a little bit, keep my sugar up, doing these presentations, she made a pot of beans. You want some beans? I'm like, oh, that sounds good. You know, I'll get a little bowl of beans. I'm like, well, wait, wait a minute, I've got to go do a presentation. That might not work out so well, you know? So you had to go through these emotions of, ooh, beans would taste good, but the consequences of that decision. I know it's kind of a silly one, but a lot of little decisions, and you'd be shocked that once you start noticing this, how many emotions actually come into decisions? And that could be like a lunch decision or something, of course, much, much bigger. But you have to learn how to live with that decisions. And, you know, just to like the food thing, all right, not to, just to make it a little bit more simpler. It's like, I love po' boys, okay? If I go out and eat a po' boy, I know that it, I'm going to put on weight if I do that. doesn't mean that I won't ever eat another po' boy in my life, but I'll try to decide on when I'm going to eat them and how many or whatever, right? So it's a lot more to a decision than just saying, okay, I'm just going to do this or do that. And as I've said a thousand times, people who have been unfortunate enough to have injury or illness have and have lost that emotional part of their brain can no longer make decisions because there's no consequence. There's no emotion attached to that decision. That's how we make decisions is we have emotions and consequences with those decisions. Now, again, making decisions is easy. Living with them is not. But here's a few things that might help. So I put easier in here instead of easy because it's never easy, right? The living with it part. And that goes for trading and outside of trading, obviously. Well, the big dog here is just make better decisions. I know. You know, drop the mic. Well, as it relates to trading, if you have a lot of confidence in what you're doing, then it's a lot easier to take the trade and then accept the outcomes. And paraphrasing Douglas, Mark Douglas, he said, if there's any stress during the trade, you having a fully accepted the risk. Well, there's always going to be some stress during the trade, but let's just say if there's excessive trade, excessive stress during the trade, you haven't fully accepted the risk of the trade. Garbage in, garbage out, as I often say. And you're going to get better inputs as you get confidence. Now, if you're trying to trade six different methodologies and you've only been trading for, let's say, a few months, 
or a year, like one of you guys that are in there tonight, hey, George, then how much confidence can you really have? Because how much time did you spend on this methodology and that methodology and that methodology and that methodology and, and all these other things? So you really haven't really put the reps in, at least not with just one single methodology and ideally one setup. And once you do these things, you begin to have some confidence and competence in what you're doing. And you also learn to accept. You also learn to live with that decision. You also learn how to drop an F-bomb and move on. The other thing is trust the process. Once you have the confidence and competence, you're much more likely to trust in the process. Now, as I'm gonna point out in a minute, if let's say you don't wanna to lose too much on a trade and you're not willing to reduce your, your share size down, but you put your stop within that normal volatility, well, guess what? There's a 99.9% .9 chance, unless you get really lucky, that you're going to get stopped out. So you have to accept the process of, hey, I'm gonna to need to give it a wider stop. And, and I'll give you like today, a little confession time, I went after the E-minis two or three times. And the third time I went after them, after losing two trades in a row or scratching out at worst, or one, but I knew I had a couple losing trades. I said, Dave, you know what? It looks like this market requires about a 30 point trailing stop which is kind of ludicrous, I know, but that's what the market called for. And I had to accept that and I had to ride out the drawdown and be willing to get stopped out and drop an F-bomb at worst. Here's a big one we could spend hours talking about this one alone, separating luck from skill. Annie Duke's book comes to mind, Thinking of Bets. I need to reread it. Uh, I recommend you do read it. I don't remember what her solutions were. And it's like, if you could figure out a way to separate luck from skill, write me a letter. We all tend to be guilty as human beings of when we make money, we feel like it was skill. And when we lose money, we feel like it was bad luck. And of course, a lot of introspection. And one way to get that introspection is to document, 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 document. And that means your trading journal and your emotional journal. And also, as I preach, and this will change your life, I, I swear to God it will, do your morning pages every day, you know? And this morning I wrote pretty much three pages just on the the... FOMO versus POMO, and I only have maybe one page of that that actually made it into tonight's presentation. And I also talked about some of the things I've been doing right, and some of the things I've been doing wrong, and some ways for me to improve. And some of that I'll share with you 